Just got done editing this interview. You guys are gonna love it. Before I do that though, I want you to know that I'm going to be in the comments for the next 30 minutes or so answering your questions. If there's additional questions you want me to ask the CEO next time I interview them, leave them below. Or if you're just loving the data points I get CEOs to share, click the thumbs up button below. That's your way of telling me you're loving this stuff and I'll get you more of it. Additionally, again, I'll be in the comments answering any questions you have. All right, for 30 minutes, enjoy the interview. Hello everyone, my guest today is John Steele. He's been coding since he was a teenager and had a career in IT before he went to law school and decided what he really wanted to be was the CEO of a SaaS company. Series Code is his company, it was founded upon his passion for coding. He's married, has two kids, and cashed in on two World Series of Poker events. John, you ready to take us to the top? Yes, I am. I kind of want to just talk about poker. Screw SaaS. I'm fine with that. <laughs> going to Vegas tomorrow for CES, and uh, I, I plan to play on the weekend. So that's interesting. What, what's the just uh, for SaaS CEOs listening that might get invited to like backyard barbecue Texas Hold'em games? What's like one tip you'd give them just to stop losing so much money playing Hold'em? Oh man, there is so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that that one's really, really hard, actually. I would say if you're in Denver or come to Denver, come to my backyard game. <laughs> you play in the garage, right? No one's going to want to play you when you say you've cashed in on two World Series poker events, man. You want to play with the newbies. No, they, they like it, right? It's a challenge. <laughs> Plenty of people knock you out, right? If, yeah. you're good, if you're a good professional player, you cash in 15% of your tournaments. So... There's plenty of chance to knock me out. Yeah, I love that. No, one of my this is like I don't I never really talk about this publicly because uh, it just has never occurred to me. But um, I, I like slowly in San Francisco, New York City, got invited into these like super high end kind of Texas Hold'em poker groups uh, okay. where it's like LPs, investors, exited founders and we all play. And honestly, that is some of the best friends I've made and the best networking ever because you sit there for eight hours. You only play 10 <laughs> percent of the hands and you talk and network the rest of the time. Yep, that's exactly right. I love that. <laughs> All right, let's focus on series code. So what came first, by the way, poker or series code? Uh, poker did, actually. Okay. Um, I started when I was, I think, 21 in Tucson, Arizona. Wow. Okay, so when did you launch series code? The series code, um, the parent company is Auxiliary Teams, and it was launched in 2016. And then series code is an offshoot of that that launched this year. Okay, so you launched it in, twenty, oh, I guess, 2019 or 2018? Or sorry, 2019 or 2020? 2016 and then, oh yeah, sorry, 2019 series code uh, rolled out. Okay, so for those that are not familiar with it, what's the company do? So we provide world-class software development at a startup price. So we help startups build their SaaS products. So actually, we, series code, we don't have a SaaS offering ourselves. We help other people build theirs. Okay, so can you talk about one or two that you've helped build? Um, so there's uh, Eleven Software, who's out in Portland, Oregon. Um, they do internet uh, internet authentication in hotels. So if you've stayed at a Marriott, um, you've probably used the software there to uh, crack open the lid of your laptop and put in your last name, room number to get online. Um, there's a company in in Austin, Texas, called Swoovy. They do uh, it's a dating app where they connect people to go on a nonprofit volunteer adventure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so give me a general sense of scale here. You launched it last. I started doing this last year. What? How many people are on your team today? Just is it just you? Uh, no. So we have 28 people uh, oh, wow. worldwide. So and we're remote first. So there are four, uh, five of us here in Denver, but then everybody else is spread around the globe. Okay. And now you've bootstrapped this. It's really an agency, correct? Yeah, 100% bootstrapped. Okay, we love that. And how many engineers of the 28? Um, it's about 20. I'd okay. have to recount, but yeah. yeah. That makes sense, right? If you're building SaaS apps, you're heavy on engineering. Right. Um, yeah. And what's the typical, so, so I mean, what's the typical gig? If someone's listening right now and they're going, Nathan, I'm a, I'm a business person with a big idea, but I can't seem to get a developer to work for me at a decent price. And they want to use somebody like you. What are they going to pay you to get a kind of a basic MVP up? So that's the thing, right? I, we go to a lot of, uh, you, you know, like the Fun Conference or Tech Stars or Rocky's Venture Club, and I get to hear a lot of people talk about the either themselves or the friend they know who, you know, scraped together fifty or hundred thousand dollars to build something, but that's not enough to usually go get an agency to do something for you. So they hire some guy in the basement. I mean, I'm in a basement, but hey. <laughs> um, you know, they get some guy in the basement who they can afford. And many times after that, they have nothing to show for it. Um, and they're out, you know, that money was put on their credit card or their home equity. So our goal was to bring world-class software development, and, you know, a true agency to people who wouldn't usually be able to afford it. So we put together packages that help uh, startups actually be able to afford it. So um, people can split the payment between cash and equity. 
Um, so for example, our publish rate is $84 an hour, but we'll do a 50, 50 split. So you can get the cash portion that you have to pay down to $42 an hour, which is usually at or under what you're going to have to pay anybody else. And for that, you get a team leader and usually a front end developer and a back end developer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to actually walk through a real example here, right? So like, let's say someone's listening right now, they have an idea uh, the mousetrap they're going to launch with, let's say is a Chrome application. Right? right. So they want to pay you to build a Chrome app. Um, may, hopefully you're familiar with those. I mean, give me a ballpark. How many hours yeah, or how familiar. many times is that going to take you to build? So it really depends on how difficult it is. A Chrome app is usually going to be pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, usually we're talking mobile apps or web apps, something a, a bit larger than that. Um, Chrome app is probably in the 25K range. But we like to tell people that um, when somebody comes to us and they say, hey, uh, I want to build this app. I just want you to build it and then go away. Um, they usually don't understand software because software never dies. If you have customers who like your product, it's going to keep going and going and you need us. I tell them, think of us like electricity. You, yeah. You're going to put it in your budget and keep paying. I get that. But I also try and like when I, a lot of founders ask me about companies like you and they say, hey, should I work with John? Should I work with this other, you know, team that does? And my answer is always the same, which is define spec wise what you think the, the lightest MVP you need is to get your first dollar of revenue. Right. And then figure out how much they are going to charge you to build that MVP, right? Correct. So, so uh, Chrome app kind of in 25K range, and I know obviously these are ballparks that are highly dependent on the specs. What, what, what might a SaaS web app cost to build with you? So SaaS web apps, I, I've seen them uh, out in three months. Um, you know, oftentimes you can have an MVP, MVP to that first dollar in, in, you know, in three months, 90 days. Yep. Um, that's typically uh, in the range of 50,000. Okay. Um, and then half of that can go on equity, half cash. So 25K cash. Yeah, okay. So let, let's go down that. So I'm a new SaaS founder. I'm using you to build a web app. I pay you 50K. I don't have 50K. So I pay you 25K. Tell right. me how that actually, I own 100% of my company. What percent are you Correct. getting for the 25K? I don't pay you in cash. So instead of, there are other companies that do something similar and they have this standard, we'll take a 7% warrant or something like that. We, um, I don't think that's fair because you don't actually know how much we need to do for you. So what we do is we accumulate an equity balance. So you, when your invoice comes, you choose, uh, okay, I'll pay 50%. We, we store that balance up and we put it onto something like a safe or an equity kiss. So basically when they, it comes time to do a financing round, we would participate like your other you know, angel or seed investors. Okay. So that safe, let's, let's just stick with safe because it's more common than a kiss. Uh, right. what, 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 what are the term? I mean, what cap are you putting on it or is it uncapped? So we don't put a cap. We believe we'll take a smaller piece of a larger pie. Uh, we don't want to, and caps usually turn into, uh, limits for future rounds. We don't want to get into that game. We'll let people grow their company as large as they can. Okay. So it's uncapped. Uh, again, 25 K is now on the safe. What's the interest rate? Um, so we don't do an interest rate, but we do ask for the 20% discount, which okay. is pretty standard. Yeah, that is standard. So, so it is truly a safe 20% discount, no interest rate, no cap. Right. Okay. Uh, let's then say over the next 12 months, um, I need you doing 5k of maintenance work per month, squashing bugs, launching a new feature here or there, things like that. So you accumulate over the next 12 months, another 60k, right. Uh, of, of, basically cash that I owe you. Can I can put all that on the safe or do I have to pay 50% in cash? We have to do 50%. We do have a program that goes as low as 18% uh, in cash and 82 equity. Um, but that's for companies we really believe in and we vetted. The standard program though is 50-50. And the, and the key is here that you know, smart uh, entrepreneurs, they want to give away the least amount of equity possible. They kind of understand the value of that. And so They'll start at the 50%, but then they'll go to, well, 80%, 90%, right? They, they want to put the least amount in into the equity and pay as much cash as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, so let me do the flip side of that as a smart founder who wants to preserve cash early on, they're not actually selling you equity, right? Safe is really a dead instrument with the expectation it's going to convert to equity. So they could, after a year and a half, screw you because there's right. no interest rate pay right. you back that money. And legally, there's no recourse for you, correct? Um, well, I, I don't think they can pay back the money. If you know it, it's in that safe, if they have a financing round, we get to participate in it. Mm -hmm. um, but there is the possibility that it just goes nowhere. And like all safe holders, you get nothing. We, I mean, we really are banking on it going somewhere. Got it, got it, got it. So, okay, so you obviously can't extend this to everybody because you have to make, you have to put on your VC hat a little bit and say, what's the likelihood they're going to do a funding round or not. So, I Correct. mean, how many times have you done this with a company and still today, a year, two, three years later, they still haven't raised any equity or had a liquidation event. 
So our, our early, uh, clients are like that. The ones where John Steele was the salesperson, right? Um, we have a couple that are still you know, in that they, they haven't shut their doors, but they're still going. We're still providing, um, work at a really great price. Um, we are getting better and better at uh, vetting clients who come out. We haven't had anybody go through a round yet because the series code. So as auxiliary teams, I was doing this. It was the Wild West. Whatever John could negotiate is what we went and got. We decided to put a, a product around it, really. And that's where we got the lawyers involved and wrote up the, the contracts and made it a standard offering at the beginning of this year. So all of those clients who've come in this year, nobody's gone to financing yet. It's a little too early. Yep. Um, but yeah, so we're still going through it. Well, so give me some context. In 2019, how many customers did you serve? Um, so we had four at that time. Okay, four. And how many of them are still paying today because it's monthly maintenance, monthly feature releases, et cetera? Or just, right, continuing to, to, to build the product. Um, so all of those are, of the, so we've had, we've had 10 customers since we started three years ago. Only one has left. Okay. So, so 2016, when you launched the agency, you, uh, you, you know, since then you've accumulated 10 customers, um, all right. but one, uh, you know, paid once and still today pay you something each month. Correct. Interesting. Um, okay. And then, so what are, what, I mean, I guess I'm curious monthly. So monthly today, you have 28 people on staff across these 10 customers. How much total monthly recurring revenue are you doing? So, uh, December was at 85,000. Okay. So, so pretty, okay. So 10 customers, each one's paying you between call it six and 10 grand a month, something like that. 8k average. Yeah. On, on average. Yep. Okay. Um, of that, uh, of that 85k in December, um, how much of it were, was one time payments like to get the MVP out versus true recurring payments? So, uh, we don't have any actually one times right now. Everything is on a recurring ongoing. So the contracts are the statement of work is ongoing work until you tell us to stop. And that's how all of our contracts are arranged right now. Interesting. Okay. Um, one of the fears that new founders have in working with somebody like you is, what if I get to the point where it takes me longer to scale? I can't afford John's bill, even with the equity share. I can't lose him because then I'm screwed. He knows the whole code right. base. Right. How do you deal with situations like that? So, of course, we can just put everything on hold. Um, you know, that, that's usually not what we want, but we'll usually pop down to that. Um, we'll call it a bridge time where we'll go down to 18% in cash and the rest on equity. Don't, don't tell anybody this, <laughs> but, uh, we'll usually do that to help people get through a tough time. Cause we often come in say a few months before the seed round is going to close. And oftentimes those take a little bit longer than people expect to close. So we'll, we'll help out during that time. And we'll usually, you know, do it in a way that we can continue developing so that we keep making progress on the product as well. That seed round though, let's say it's on a convertible note, your safe doesn't convert into the convertible note, right? You're still going to have to oh. wait. Yeah, we would still wait. We're usually waiting until there's a round of with a valuation of a million dollars. Yeah, Sorry, uh, raising a million dollars. Yeah, valuation much higher. What if you? Um, what if someone uses you and then two years from they don't raise any equity, then two years from now they sell for ten million dollars? Uh, do you basically just? I mean, how do you convert your money into that ten million dollar sale price? Yeah, it's built into the safe. Um, we, there is some kind of sale price that's determined. And then you take the balance that we have and you determine what that would have been. So you uh, give it a 20% discount basically. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Interesting. Um, I'm trying to think about how your model scales, right? I mean, can you build this into a company that's going to do 5 million this year? It's tough. Um, our 5 million goal is in three years from now. Um, we, we've been growing at hundred percent a year, but that's because we've been small. Um, we expect to grow about 75% for the next three years. Um, it's not like, like I said, series code is not a SAS operation. Um, it's tough to uh, grow because the, the team captains, right? The person who runs a team of developers, um, is the architect, is the project manager, is the client contact. They kind of are the glue that hold this thing together. And we have to find that person each time we need, you know, each time we bring in three or four clients, there's a new team captain that's go, goes in there. And that's a, that's a tough job. It takes us a while to vet and find the right people. You did $85,000 a month, two months ago, or a month ago, December, 2019. Right. What were, what were you at a year prior to that December, 2018? That was 30,000. 30, okay, got it. So yeah, kind of more than 100% year over year growth. And are you operating everything at break even right now? Or are you profitable? We are just at break even. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's obviously a good place to be. Now, right. could, could you raise comp equity, you know, cash for what you're doing or no? We probably could. It's funny, we sponsor a lot of uh, these entrepreneurs 
entrepreneur events like the Rockies Venture Club. And when we have a booth there, we have a lot of investors come up to us. Oh, so you're raising money. What's it for? We say, oh, we're not. We're like, you should be. <laughs> um, but we just right now aren't looking into it. We turn it down. Yeah. I mean, how is there a way? I mean, you only want to raise capital if you can deploy it in a way that helps you grow your your business, right? Your right, bottleneck right. is finding more engineers to take on more hours of development work. That's like a hard thing to to grow, right? I mean, you're an agency. Yeah, and so we actually are really good. We I've been doing it for, I mean, even before starting this up for five, six, seven years of finding developers themselves. Um, we have a process that takes forty applicants and funnels it down to one person who who joins the the team. Um, including, you know, a, a programming test uh, that is actually paid. And so we give everybody the same test. And so we know um, where they fit in the in line and stuff. So we actually can get developers in pretty quick in a week or two. And we've been able to do this just routinely over and over. But we don't have that same kind of system for the team captain who is uh, a bit more dynamic and has to have a higher level of skill. Um, and I, I just don't know the way to to bring with them in yet without working with them and and kind of getting a good. Where feel are you them. sourcing the forty developers? I mean, are you using sites like TopTal, Upwork, and then basically bringing them onto your own platform and then hiring one full time? Correct. So yeah. yeah, we use those freelancing platforms that are out there because they have so many people around the globe connected to it. Yeah. Do you put your current projects through TopTal and Upwork, or do you actually hire these twenty eight people are full time on your personal balance sheet and P and L? So they're, um, since most are out of the country, they're 1099, but okay. they, um, and, and we use those things as payment uh, methods, vehicles, because it's, everybody's on there that it's easy to get the money through. We don't post the project itself. We post only the test project. And then once they pass that, we bring them into our own systems to actually do the project work. But we treat our developers, so that was one of the one the things that I didn't like about software development um, years ago, and I wanted to change. And we have. Um you know, we're ranked as the top in the top seven percent uh, for engagement by Gallup uh, in, across the globe. Um, we want to make sure that developers feel like they belong. They're developers, so we treat even our contractors like they're full time employees. Their their workload doesn't go up and down. We guarantee they're going to get whatever however many hours a week that they want to get, um, and they don't have to look for other work or be worried that they're not going to have work. Yeah. Um- this is interesting. So you find them through Upwork and then you don't, or TopTal, then you don't post the job there, but you'll use the Upwork like processing features for like, you know, time tracking and screenshots Correct. of their desktop to see what they're coding. And right. you actually will pay through Upwork as well. Yeah. 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 Makes it all smooth that way. We don't have to worry about all these different payment methods. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Very good. Let's wrap up John with the famous five. Number one, favorite business okay. book. Uh, right now it's Traction by Gino Wick. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? I'm reading the biography of Elon Musk. I think that guy has done some really great things. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your company? Um, well, we use uh, Amazon Web Services, right? That's just across the board. So, yeah. Number four, how many hours of sleep you get every night? Seven. Okay. You can't, you, you can't let that go. <laughs> <laughs> what's your situation? Married, single kids? I am married. Uh, we've been married 10 years. We have two kids. They are uh, two and five, two Ama- boys. That's amazing. How old are you? I'm 40. 40. Last or last question. Yeah. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? You know, I wish I knew that there are bad actors in the world, but that's, that's the minority, not the majority. Uh, I'd say to myself, don't give up on your dreams. Um, don't lose your sense of wonder. Guys, don't lose your sense of wonder. Coming from a World Series of Poker guy who's cashed up many times there, now launching Series Code, helping founders get their MVP built and trying to basically save cash at the beginning as well. So he'll take equity, he'll take cash payments as they look to, again, help you build your company and get to your first either equity round or a liquidation event. John, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. These CEOs rarely give these kinds of interviews. I hit them hard, I get the data, and I wanna do it more. So if you wanna get more of this stuff, make sure you subscribe up here. And then additionally, go check out one of my other CEO interviews right now.